Yeah, this is like super my neighborhood. I drive this street almost every day. Right now, we're headed, I have to leave church early. I'm headed to a sound check for the gig tomorrow. It's a pretty big venue. It's my first time playing it. I'm excited to play it. It holds like probably, I think it holds 8,000 people. Double Diddy, double stack Diddy. The name LA came from, well, my name is Arthur. My dad is Big Art, Big Arthur. So that makes me Little Art, LA. There was a point where I had to make the decision to choose, I had to choose music intentionally. I figured, okay, since I can't play drums, that's not gonna be a, a lucrative living. I can just be, I have a decent voice. I wanted to get into sports journalism. That's what I wanna do. I was registering for classes and nothing sounded interesting. I was sitting on the bus stop and the bus had pulled off. And you know, there's like a steam in the back of the bus, that exhaust. And I promise you, when that exhaust hit me, I, I either heard or I thought in my head, I said, music has to be. And at that moment, I thought, I said, okay, you know what? Life is way too short. Even if it don't work, I'm about to try it. This is my basement. It's unfinished. It's a rough kind of the shed area. I rehearse down here. I make it happen. So it's a, it's a beginner level home studio rehearsal space. The tissue is for earplugs. Boom. How you like that? I want to be a drummer. What do I have to do? You got to be cool. Not, not, not be cool, not like this cool. You got to be like this cool. Like, talk to that stranger. Still, much love. Hang out, keep shining, do your thing, fam. Be nice, be nice, be nice. And I think you knowing your stuff, it works in your favor. If you're cool and you play like that, you make yourself an asset. The toughest part about making a living as a musician is the feast and famine. When it's good, oh, it's sweet. When it sucks, it sucks. Another whack part, the only thing, the only bad thing, the only bad thing about being a drummer specifically, this is it, the only bad thing is lugging all the gear around. It's a pretty big gig, so I'm gonna play a big kit. Um, everybody who's, who I look up to, they always got huge kits. They always playing big kits. All my friends out of town, they always playing ma massive drum kits, so I could do that too. Let me do it. It's a lot of work though. A lot of them, they got drum techs, they got endorsements and all that good stuff. That's on the way. That's on the way for your boy. How do I make a living? My favorite way to make money is playing drums in the studio, recording an album for somebody. I teach in schools. Uh, I do private lessons. I play at church. In bigger cities with way more gospel culture, people feed families off of just church. Church is lit, okay? Now there's gigs and there's shows. A gig is where like, hey, we need a small jazz combo to play in the corner. Nobody's gonna be paying attention to you. He's like, okay, cool. That's a gig. <laughs> Nobody knows you at the gig, okay? Gigs are kind of kind of hard sometimes. Shows are what you want your friends and family to come see. For example, with Dim Atlas, I played sound set with him last summer. Sound set is a show. How else? How else? Sound feel? Ooh! <laughs> Let's get it. I'm a student who's trying to steal from every single drummer I see. If you're a kid, Caitlin, my, my student coming today, I'm gonna take all of his stuff and reinvent it to be mine. And it's gonna be code. You know what I'm saying? So like, there's nobody you can't learn from. <laughs> Caleb is 12 years old. And Caleb is my favorite type of student because Caleb is exactly the way I was. <laughs> what? It's, it's super close. 
It's something that you do. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm gonna take it. I'm stealing it. What's this? Oh, do you do a foot in there too? I'm messing it up, dude. So at the beginning, it's like one, two, D4, and then so it's like. Ooh. <laughs> That's killing. It goes, ah. Uh. There's a reason why I mentor, because I had fire mentors when I was growing up. That's one thing that church gave me. That's one thing that being in the black community gave me. And I realized that that's one of my jobs. That's, that's why I even teach. Cause I gotta, I gotta tell all the secrets to the, to the youth. I gotta tell them the stuff that I'm learning right now. That's what I have to share with Caleb. Uh, do cat cat, want to do that with me, what you? I learned from Soundfield that come in retrospect, you know, experiences, meeting people or, or conversations that Soundfield has provided or talking to Nare, okay? Just after we shoot in DC, grabbing lunch and just having just nerdy musical conversation. favorite tracks that we did was the parody track. <laughs> this was like the overkill, like just do so much and then cut it. Uh, that was one of my favorite tracks to work on. I like that one. <laughs> Trap, that was a good one. Cause like that was our first initial try at it. And I already sent a whole folder of sounds and we had to pull from that folder and that was a dope one. That came together. I was just like, that gave me hope. I was like, okay, yeah, this is about to work. This is gonna be tight. Psych, uh -huh, I can't play. <laughs> but I got one note. One note. That's never happened.